The iShares core dividend growth ETF has a 2.48% dividend yield, which is nothing spectacular. Basically, if you invest $10,000 as of now, you will get $248 per year. If you invest in the fund, you are probably doing it with the hope of future growth of the dividend and don't rely on that small number of current yield. So let's check how the ETF that is literally created to give you dividend growth is doing in that department. The fund is less than 10 years old, so we don't have data for the 10 year growth rate. However, we can calculate what the overall dividend growth since the inception is on our own. We grab the first full year of dividends, 2015, and the last one, 2022, and we put them into the compounded growth rate calculator. For these seven years, the growth rate of the dividend is 8.86% annually. The five-year dividend CAGR is 9.66%, the three-year is 8.76%, and the past 12-month dividend growth rate is 12.04%. These are pretty good results in my opinion, but of course you need to expect that from an ETF focused on dividend growth. Let's now check the performance of the total returns of the ETF. The total return for the past five years is 8.58% annualized and 10.09% annually for the past three years. Now, as I mentioned in the start of the video, the fund was created in 2014, which means we don't even have a 10-year track record for it. This is always something to note because all of the ETFs created in the years after the financial crisis have enjoyed literally the biggest bull market in history. That means that their performance leading up to 2022 is expected to be great and it might not be because of their great quality. 2022 was not a financial crisis type of year, by no means, but he had a substantial decline in stock markets with the fastest rate of interest rate increase in history, so it is kind of a barometer for the funds. And as we can see, the total return of DGRO in 2022 were down, but nothing catastrophic really happened and the fund even increased its dividend in that year. So despite the okay 2022 year, overall, I can't claim that the fund has been battle tested, having in mind that it has been created near the start of one of the best times for the stock market in history. Let's now look at the fund's holdings and diversification. The top 10 companies are all pretty solid ones. Microsoft, Apple, JP Morgan Chase, Johnson & Johnson, Exxon, Abvi, Chevron, Procter & Gamble, Broadcom, Pfizer. We can see a healthy mix of three tech companies, the biggest bank, three pharma stocks, the two biggest energy companies, and arguably, depending on the way you classify things, the biggest consumer staples company. Now, at the time of watching this video, this will have changed, so I won't get fixated on the stocks themselves. What I want to see is the screens of the index put in practice and the results they give. And from what I am seeing, I like the result a lot. I even have some of these stocks in my portfolio as individual positions. Speaking of that, if you would like to see my top four stocks and ETFs I invest in for the current economic and geopolitical environment we are in, go to the link in the description and I will send them to your email for free. The report will always be up to date, regardless of when you are watching this, because I am constantly updating it. Now, as you remember, the individual holdings are capped at 3%, and we can see that this is applied in the ETF, with the exception of Microsoft, which will get trimmed in the next rebalancing event. The top 10 holdings represent 25.5% of DGRO, which is a good level of diversification in my opinion, especially considering other ETFs which are extremely top-heavy. The total number of companies in DGRO is over 400, which gives the ETF a huge diversification. As I have discussed in previous videos, too much diversification can be a bad thing, especially if no quality screens are applied and all kinds of weak companies are let in. Here, however, we have decent filters for the index. Again, they're not the best I have seen and are pretty basic, but at least we have them, and so that should ensure some level of quality despite the huge number of companies in the ETF. This is just a small part of my complete guide I did on the DGRO ETF. To check the full review, go to the video that should have appeared on your screen right now or to the description below.